Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Today in our next tutorial on MongoDB, we will be creating CRUD APIs or create, read, update, delete APIs using Mongoos. These database operations will be performed using the Mongoos model methods as we learned in our previous videos and we will be using the Next.js API route handlers to create our APIs. Now, even though we are using the Next.js full stack framework to create APIs, the implementation will be similar for any other API library. Also, as a side note, please consider subscribing to the channel as it helps the videos reach out to a larger audience. And with that said, let's get straight into the video. So here we are on VS Code and we have created a fresh Next.js project. Now the one thing to remember about this project is that we are using the latest app router instead of the page router which existed in the older versions of Next.js. Since Next.js 13, it's recommended to use the app router and we will be using the same. So our goal today is to create CRUD APIs and as all of you might know, you can also write your backend API handlers with Next.js. Now I've created an entire video about how to create API routes in Next.js. If you guys are just starting with Next.js, it's highly recommended to check out that video first before watching this particular video. So our goal here would be to create four API endpoints. Now these endpoints are there on the screen. And as you can see, the path of all of these API routes is the same. And the only thing that differs is their method. So the four API handlers that we'll be creating will be for the same API route, but for the different methods that a user generally performs over the database. Now, one thing to notice here is that in the path name, the email value is a dynamic value. So for example, if we want to fetch the details of a user with email michael at xyz.com, this is what our path name will look like. And since we are fetching the details, we'll be using the get route handler. Similarly, if we want to create a new user, we'll be using the post route handler. If we want to update the user with the unique email, we'll be using the put handler. And to delete a user with a particular email, we'll be using the delete handler. We'll be creating the API route handlers shortly, but before that, we need to first create the necessary utils that we need to connect to the database. And the database that we will be using here is a MongoDB database. I've created an entire playlist of tutorials teaching how you can work with MongoDB and the Mongoose library. So if you want to learn more about MongoDB, please check out those videos. But like any other database, the common concepts will remain the same. And you'll still be able to use this video as your reference, even if you're working with, let's say, a MySQL database. So to start with things, we'll first create a .env file, which will store our MongoDB connection string. This connection string is important because it enables us to connect to the database. So here in our .env.local file, we'll create a new environment variable by the name of MongoDB hostname and we'll provide a connection string as its value. Now this connection string uses the MongoDB protocol and it also has the username and password details to connect to the database. Once that is done, we'll create a new utils folder in our project. And inside this folder, we'll create a new file by the name of DB connection. Now the purpose of this file will be to store a method which we will use to connect to the database. Our API route handlers will call this function every time before querying the actual database. Here we'll be using the mongoose library. So we'll import the mongoose library and store the return module object inside the mongoose variable. We'll also create a global connection object. And the reason why we'll be keeping the connection object global will become clear very soon. Now we'll create a main function by the name of create connection. It's an async function within which we'll be calling the mongoose.connect asynchronous function. Now this particular connect function takes in the connection string that we stored in our environment variable, which we created earlier. So within this function call will pass as a parameter, the MongoDB host name environment variable. We'll assign the value of this created connection within our connection object. And then we'll simply just return the connection object. We'll export this particular create connection function. And before we move forward, let's add one more bit of sophistication to this function by adding the functionality of connection caching. And that's the reason why we created our connection object as a global variable. To cache a database connection, all we'll do is while calling the create connection function, we'll check if the connection variable already has the MongoDB connection object. And if it does, we'll simply just return the connection object instead of creating a new connection object every single time. So let me write that in code. We'll add this condition in front of the mongoose.connect call. And we'll also add a little description to our function here, which tells exactly what this method is doing. So if we have already cached a MongoDB connection, which means that if the connection value is defined, 
then just simply return the connection object. Else, if it's not created, then create a new MongoDB connection and return it. Now let's move forward with the next piece, which is the Mongoose model. Now we need these models to enable easy querying over our databases. So instead of writing the entire query string, we'll just use the query methods which are being exposed by the collection models. And the model that we will be manipulating is the user model. And for that, let me show you guys our database first. So our database is pretty simple and it only has one collection or one table inside of it. And its name is users. Now this users collection stores as the name says user objects. And that's what we will be writing CRUD API handlers for. Now this user object has the following properties, a unique identifier, which is auto-generated, the first name, last name, email, DOB, account type, and other timestamp values. To mimic this data structure, We'll create a user collection model by naming our file as user.js. Here we'll first import the mongoose library and then we'll define the user collection schema. The schema is nothing but the structure of the user collection objects that we just saw on MongoDB Atlas database. Now to create a model out of the schema, we'll call the mongoose.model method. We'll give the name of our model and then assign a schema to it. We'll store its value inside a variable user model and then we'll export this user model as our default export. Now, just like we added caching logic in our create connection method, we'll also add caching logic here. And we will achieve that by adding this particular logic to our user model assignment. We're basically saying here that if the model for the user object is already existing within the mongoose module, we do not need to create a new model every single time. And that was it for all of the utilities that we had to create before actually defining our API routes in Next.js. If you want to learn more about MongoDB schema and models, go check out my playlist on MongoDB and all of the concepts that I've mentioned here will become pretty clear to you. Let me save all of these changes and let's go ahead and create a very first API route handler, which will be the get API route handler. Now, since we're using the app router, our API route handlers will be housed under the app directory and the path name that we have here will ultimately decide the folder structure of our project. So if I want the API name to match what we have on screen right now, I'll first have to create a user folder inside our app directory. And then the next segment in the path name is a dynamic email to add dynamic values to the app router will again create a new folder now inside the user folder. And since it's dynamic, we'll have to wrap it around square brackets. So we'll write the email keyword within square brackets. And now for the last part of the path name API, we'll create a ABI folder inside our email folder. At this point of time, our folder structure is complete. So under app, we have user followed by email followed by API. And now to finally create our JavaScript file within which we'll be writing all of our API route handlers will create a route.js file. Now the naming here is important because as a standard, you'll have to define all of your API route handlers within the route.js file itself. Here we'll first import all of the database utilities that we created. So the create connection method and the user model. And then as a next step, we'll create our first get API route handler. To achieve that, we'll export an asynchronous function by the name of the method that we are trying to handle. So since our first API that we're creating here is the get user email API inside our route.js file, we'll export the function by the method name get itself. Now by default, the route handlers have access to the request and params parameters. Request is nothing but the incoming HTTP request and we'll use the params object here to access our dynamic email value. So within our route handler, we'll first create a connection to our MongoDB database. And for that, we'll just simply call the create connection asynchronous method. This method will take care of connecting to the database. And then using our mongoose model user object, we'll call the find one method, which is used to query a single object within the MongoDB table. So within the users table, if I want to search by the email property, all I'll have to do is pass an object within the find one method with all of the filters that I want to add to my search query. Since I just want to add the email filter, I'll add an email key and its value I'll assign as params.email. Now this params.email is nothing but the dynamic email value which we'll be passing while calling our APIs. For example, here we want to query a user by the name of Michael XYZ. And this find one method is also an asynchronous method. So we'll add the await keyword and save the response in a user variable. 
and then as a last instruction to our get method we'll just simply return the http json response by using the universal http response object now this is the standard http response object that javascript has access to and we'll be using the json property inside of the response object to send back a json response and that json response is nothing but our newly fetched user object and that's basically it we're done creating our get route handler let's save the changes and start our development server by typing in the command npm run dev on the integrated terminal on vs code and we'll wait for the development server to start our development server is up on the port 3000 of localhost now to test our api let's open postman and on postman let's create a new request let's copy our development server's url here and then copy the path name that we have used for our get api now let's go back to the cloud mongodb instance and we'll see what all users are already present in our database so there is one user with the email michael at xyz.com already in the database we'll copy the email for testing purpose and in place of colon email we'll simply copy and paste and then we'll click on send to test our api and as you can see we're getting the user object back in the response which has the email as michael at xyz.com let me increase the font size on postman for you guys so that you can see the response better and here we're getting the status of the http response as 200 ok which means our request went through successfully without any trouble now since we've got the hang of things creating the rest of the apis will be pretty simple let's go ahead and create the next api route handler which will be for the post method and since the path name of the api route handler is same we will have to create the handler for our post method within the same file where we previously created our get handler we'll export a new function with the name as post our first step will be always to connect to the database so we'll copy the line up here and before writing the rest of the post handler let's go ahead and create our api request first so we'll copy the path name create a new request and this time the method will be post and we will have to pass the user information as json within the body of our post request since we'll be creating a new user and we can't have conflicting emails we'll change the email in the path name to a new email which doesn't exist in the database for example an at xyz.com and we'll pass the rest of the properties that we need to create a user object inside the body so we'll pass the first name last name dob and account type properties in our http request body now within our post handler to read all of these body properties that we're passing as json in the http request we will be using the json method being exposed by the request object that we're passing in as a parameter to our route handlers and since this is an asynchronous function we'll add the await keyword and assign the return value to variable name body and as a next step we'll call the user models create method which is used to create a new object inside the mongodb collection within this create object we'll pass a new user object which will have the first name last name email dob and account type being fetched from the body object that we just passed by using the request.json method and for the email of the object we'll fetch its value from the dynamic params that we are passing in the path name we'll store the result of the user.create method in a variable called result and then as a response for our post api route handler we'll simply return a json response with the result variable now let's go ahead and test the post method so on postman if i now hit on send we are getting back a status 200 ok but nothing in the response body which is probably because we forgot to add the await keyword in front of our user.create call but if we refresh the user collection you will see that at the bottom there is an entry with the details that we recently added with the new user that we just tried to create let's delete this user manually and we'll try to hit the api again so the user has now been deleted we'll hit the api again and this time we're also getting the proper response body back in the response of the api and if you go back to the database and hit on refresh we'll be able to see the newly created entry at the bottom so let's scroll to the bottom here and we have our new user entry here now the put method that we need to create is very similar to the post method so i'll just copy the entire post method and rename it to put and the only change that we need to do here is that instead of calling the create method we will call the update one method 
Now this method takes in two parameters. First one, the filter and the second one, the actual updated object. Now the updated object remains the same, but the filter that we have been using so far is the email filter, which will copy from our get request handler here and paste as the first parameter that we need to pass to the update one method. Let's save all of our changes and also test our put API. We'll go back to Postman, we'll duplicate the request and now instead of post, we'll be calling the put method. And in our body, let's change the last name from Richards to something else, for example, Williams, and we'll hit the send button. Now we got a success response back. In the response body, we have a property modified count, which basically says the number of objects that were updated and its value is one. And this will always be one because we are using the update one method. And just to confirm that our API worked, we'll go back to our cloud database. We'll refresh the collection. We'll scroll to the bottom for our new object. And as you can see here, the last name has been changed to Williams. Now for our last and final API route handler, which is the delete API route handler. The handler function will be similar to that of the get handler. We'll copy the get handler and rename it to delete. And the only difference here will be that instead of calling the find one method, we'll be calling the delete one method. Delete one expects the filter to be passed. And since we're using the email as a filter, we'll keep the object filter as params.email, which is our dynamic email value. Let's save our changes and go ahead and test our delete API. So here we'll duplicate the get request and instead of using the get method, we'll use the delete method and let's pick up an email from our MongoDB database. So let's say we're using the email michael at xyz.com. We'll paste the dynamic email parameter in the path name of the API and hit on send. We received a success response and the deleted count is one. If we go back to the cloud database, hit on refresh, you'll see that the first entry that was there in the MongoDB collection is now gone. And that was basically it. We successfully created the four route handlers for our CRUD APIs in MongoDB. In Next.js, now obviously we can further improve these API route handlers. For example, we can add error handling to it. But since this video has already become long enough, I'll stop for now. Also, I'll upload all of the code for this particular tutorial on GitHub and put its link down in the description. That's it for now and I'll see you guys in the next video.